What's up everyone and welcome to this Yon guide and we are going to take a deeper look into Yon top and mid into everything and after this guide you will be able to master this champion and play like Sukil. But before that you gotta understand the mindset that you need to play Yon. You can't just lock in Yon and think yeah I'm just gonna play like Yon, you know? No, you lock it in with the intention to 1v9 this whole match. You are a 1v9 carry and you are the main character, okay? You scale hard, you can 1v9 and you got to take all the resources that you can get. You have to carry this game, none other than you is able to. Get that in your head, do you understand? Yes sir, yes sir! Alright, first we take a look at the runes, followed by builds and matchups. Going briefly over the matchups and how you want to play against all of them. Then we go over the strengths and weaknesses, followed by how to use your strengths and avoid your weaknesses by taking a look how Zukil and other good Yon players do it with their trading patterns, combos, tricks, wave control, spacing, everything. And then we will have a example gameplay from none other than myself against the Renekton, a hard counter of Yon. And there you will see how to play around champions like Renekton and how to beat them and just put them into the dirt so hard that these diamond players like this Renekton in the replay that we we're gonna watch look like absolute bronze players. And after that we will take a look at how you want to play the mid game into late game out and win the game. As for the runes, you always want to go lethal tempo and you can pretty much copy this rune page over here. There are some things you can change occasionally. For example, last stand you can change, but last stand is 90% of the time always better. Then you can also change conditioning. Conditioning is only if you're confident in your matchup. If you're playing against a mage with a lot of poke or someone other else with a lot of poke, second win can help you get through early game and if you're playing against a lot of trading or burst bone plating is always a great option as well that's it already about the runes let's move on into the builds as for the builds you either start Dorn shield or blade depending on how confident you are in the matchup against mages or a lot of poke Dorn shield will always be the better, better option and blade will be a confident and aggressive start. You also want to follow it up by Berserker Griefs first, always. After Berserker Griefs, Longsword over Dagger. That's right, you heard it right. Longsword over Dagger. You want to build it somewhat like this. Or maybe go get a Scepter if you get poked a lot. Then you follow it into the Shield Bow, Infinity Edge. And that's your core build already. Now, you used to build seal back in the day, but nowadays you don't build it that often anymore. I personally don't build it at all. The same counts for most players that play Yon or Yasuo nowadays, because it just delays your immortal shield bow and in infinity edge too much. Now after that, you can go for a death stance if you're fat, or if you're in a tight match GA. These are the really core items that you pretty much always want to go. And then you are free to build whatever you feel like you need. For example, anti-healing or a GA on top of the death stance, magic resist, whatever you need. That is one build, that's the crit build. And you basically want to go the crit build 90% of the time. But in some occasions you also want to go the tank you want to build and for the tank build you also start off with berserker griefs followed into blade then followed into iceborne gauntlet it's by far the best tank item for your own and then you will go for a seal into infinity edge finishing off your core items and then you build whatever you feel like you need now when do you want to go tank build and when do you want to go the crit build? 
uh, for me it's pretty simple the tank build obviously gives you um, some power against tanks with the blade of the rune king and if you're behind or just struggling with some tanks blade can help you a lot but also the iceborn gauntlet will make you a lot more tanky and against who is this good if you're going even against the renekton that's a specific case it's pretty much one of the only cases i always go this build if you i'm even against renekton i go the tank build because otherwise renekton will be able to one tap you and it doesn't matter how much damage you have but with the iceborn he won't and you will have some impact in the game and that's it already about the build actually that's all you need to know let's move on as for the matchups we have the four different matchup types listed here so let's get right into it starting with the mages mages are usually quite easy to deal with as Yon, since they can't keep up with your all-in and if they don't have any escapes they will have a hard time against you the only hard part against mages is the early game but you will easily get over it by starting Doran shield as for tanks um, they're quite easy as well but they can actually punish you if you misstep obviously it's medium because it's hard to kill them it's hard to get a big lead off them if they don't misplay but if you misplay they can punish you it's more that they can't clap you but you have to misplay and then they can punish you easily for that and bruisers are hard cause usually bruisers win the all in against you especially in the early game a darius or a jax or whatever but the way you deal with them is by dodging key skill shots and just having slow trades and space a lot not don't go for an all-in just try to poke them down because the bruises don't have range but you do have some options range options which we're going to get over later in the video so use them to poke them down space properly and once they're low enough you can actually all-in them the assassins are hard since they can be really obnoxious because you want long trades but they're good at short ones and they won't give you long trades <coughs> but for assassins i recommend you same for bruisers make use of your level one that's really important as yon against melee matchups because your level one is quite strong and stronger definitely stronger than the one of assassins because you have lethal tempo and a relatively low cooldown on your q so try to get a lead from level one and snowball from there on as for the strengths and weaknesses, Yun has a high mobility with his uh, E, Q3 and Ult, where, which can, used, can be used in multiple ways. As for dodging skill shots, escaping ganks, initiating a fight, however you want, be creative with it and use it to your advantage. He has a lot of CC with his Ult and Q3. He has range with his Q and W, good wave clear with these scales as well. He scales since he's a crit champ and his level 1 that you should make use of it. And we're gonna see this in, in the replay against Renekton. His weaknesses are obviously the early game. He can be punished by most of the champions in the early game. And his all in is a weakness because um, in top lane at least he won't be able to all in a let's say a Darius without now playing him or a Jax or a Aurelia <coughs> at least not after like five five six um, levels now enough about the strengths and weaknesses let's uh, continue now we're getting into the good stuff into the core of this guide and that is the trading patterns combos you can use and just tips and tricks that you have to utilize when playing Yon. And let me start off with the E ability of Yon. Because there's many people that use their E wrong. Because so many people just use the E to trade. That's a good idea. 
but it can have so many more use cases and we're going over all of them right now. The first one is use your E1 as a dodge. That's right, you fight without your E, but you use it to dodge. Especially in laning phase, you won't be able to deal that much damage from your E anyways. So you much rather use it to dodge, for example, a Jax E. If Jax counter strikes, you just E away, wait out his counter strike and then trade back. And then you will actually be able to play against Jax quite easily, even though you might expect him to counter you because of this counter strike. You have to play around it. Same goes for a Darius. If a Darius wants to Q you, you E towards him, denying his heal, his passive stacks and damage. So make sure to use your E as a dodge and not as an engage. Then your E can also be used as a chase down and not as an engage. So you have your enemy low enough, you can kill him, you engage with your Q3 and the enemy wants to back off, you E after him to follow it up. Next thing you can use your E for. Clear waves from safety. If you're in the mid game or if your enemy has your wave frozen and you need to get to the wave, you can just E, clear the wave and back off. It's simple, it's safe and it's efficient. A similar concept goes to E for towers. You can chunk towers, get plates with your E and you're back real quick. This enables you to firstly get back so faster, get the plates faster, but on top of that also escape from a potential jungle gank if some jungler tries to punish you for going for that plate. Now the next big thing you can use your E for is to avoid CC lockdown. Now your E2 locks CC. What do I mean by that? For example, if you're getting slapped by a Zoe and the sleep is about to come through and you E back, you completely negate Zoe's sleep and she won't be able to sleep you once during the entire game. That's why Yon is such a good champ against Zoe, by the way. Same can be used against any type of CC. Being it a predictable CC like a Orn auto hit or Orn knock up or even a Malzar ultimate. You heard it right. If you go into a combo against Malzar, let's say you go and you know he's going to ult and snap back. When you snap back the same time as he ults, his ult will go on cooldown, his ult will be interrupted and you won't receive any damage. That's really big and you should really make use of it. Now, <coughs> these are pretty much the use cases for your E1, so make use of them. Now, let's get into a bit more of how you want to play Yon, basically. At first, uh, we have a quick trading pattern and that's a Q auto hit W auto hit back off. This trading pattern will get you a favorable trade most of the time because during your first auto hit the enemy is CC'd. During your second auto hit you have the shield from your W making it pretty easy to win a trade most of the time. So make use of this trading pattern. Against a champion like Renekton who can just stun you, you should just go for a quick trade like this. Q auto hit, that's enough and just back off, cause if he gets a stun he will win the trade. And after that you can look for an all in, but never all in bruisers at full HP. Then also always make use of your Q and W range, you have a lot range, you have a lot of wave clear. And what Sukul does, when there's a low life minion, and let's say here's an, an Olaf, he will always focus the champion with his Q, always, and never go for the minion. Poke them down. You have to space properly, just use your range advantage against the top lane matchups or melee matchups, and just poke them down. <laughs> 
then you also have to make use of your level one with lethal, lethal tempo because your level one is actually quite potent because lethal tempo level one is just extremely strong so make use of it against assassins you will always win it and against bruiser you will win it after you poke them a little so try to make use of it then use your R as a follow-up for your Q3 sometimes so Q3 into R will connect these two CC's it will layer them and give the enemy no chance to dodge your R at all making it a really potent engage also what you always should do with Yon is try to get a freeze out because with Yon you really want to freeze why because Yon is a fighter and he needs space to fight if the enemy just walks back under the tower you don't have enough burst to kill him you want extended traits you know so if you freeze you get extended traits you have easier traits easier spacing can because you can just back off to tower you have gank potential you have so many options with you only after you froze the lane so make sure to use this to your advantage then also something you should uh, consider is when you hit an opponent with your Q through a minion you will not get minion aggro if you hit a minion in front of the enemy you won't get minion aggro so make use of this as well in the early game obviously now this Renekton replay is the perfect example how you want to play against a champion who has a stronger level early game than you and all in so you want to space properly you want to poke them and once you poke them you go for an all-in as you can see he walks up iq and walk back get his pwn plating he walks for the minion q again walk back get the q3 he walks up i walk back so he doesn't poke me back you know and now i got four q's out while he didn't get anything after that, after I get four Qs out, I see an all-in angle, because he's junked already. I have lethal tempo and my Q3 stacked. If this hits, he's dead. He knows that. But he also knows that he might have a good trade follow-up if I miss. So what he does, he dodges it and trades back. But after this he should just back off because he's tanking so many minions. I've stacked my lethal temp already and I had a health lead before that as well. And we'll see what happens. He has to burn his flash. And I punish him for this. With a simple Q flash. Oh yeah, that's bonus tip by the way. You can Q flash with Yone to catch your opponents off guard and to give them no reaction time at all now let's also take a look at something real quick that I want to tell you guys if you hit your opponent through a minion not like I did here but if you hit your opponent through a minion with your Q you won't get a uh, minion aggro just uh, for Yon and Yasuo that's the same if you hit your opponent directly you will but if you hit a minion before you hit the champ you won't get minion aggro that's a small tip you can utilize as well <laughs> then after we kill them he's level one and he doesn't have tp so i'm like you know what i'm gonna be greedy here my jungler is moving up so i'm gonna push it out he's level one what, what should he do to me he doesn't have sums so we push it out real quick <laughs> and to get a base to get a better base with better items now he comes you get some damage in i see he wants to hold the wave i'm like nah nah not gonna happen he used his e so he used his e on the wave so i knew he doesn't have a w right so i can just go in and trade on him and I get a really good trade with the minions and he's already low alive again and cause he traded back like this he's pushing back and he's doing the right thing here he's going to interrupt my base 
he goes for an interrupt again. I get a good Q. And then again, once he uses his W, I don't let him get into range. I walk back. Poke back. He tries to get into range. I instantly move back. Space back. Then his W runs out. I try to get a, a bit more chunk damage. Don't get it, unfortunately. Like, alright. Now his wave is pushing back and look at the position of my needle with him having no summoners. We all know what's coming, right? And that's just because we spaced well and that's it. We spaced well and we knew how our jungler is going to rotate. And this spacing can make this Renekton look like a fool. So now Needle is top. She should have came before Skull, but it works out anyways. Now here the wave is pushing towards me, which is perfect. I can just base and TP, right? But I'm not basing. Why am I not basing yet? Well, you'll see. I take a few more minions, but without breaking the freeze. Without breaking the freeze. The reason why I did this was because I was on 1000 gold also. If you're quick, about to hit a power spike, make sure to get it. So I was on 1000 gold, I went and got a few more minions to get 1100. And then I got the Berserker Greaves, giving me an insane power spike. And the wave's perfectly fine still, because I have DP. Now I want to thin out the wave, because I don't want it to crash, I want to freeze it. You always want to freeze it as Yon, even mid or top. Because Yon isn't an assassin, he's a he's a battler, pretty much, because he's he does auto hit damage, he does a lot of damage over time, has a lot of DPS, but he needs space, to, otherwise the enemy is just gonna run away. So freezing always good. It will give you gank potential, better traits, better spacing, and you will see what's happening here. So, this Renekton knows he has one job and one job only. He wants to get this wave inside my tower, so he can be fine. And I'm not gonna let him. So I have my cool 3 ready. I Q3 auto hit and back off. Because if I W here and give another auto hit, he will just stun me, get his full combo off. And with all these minions hitting me, I will be half life and not be able to defend my wave from crashing. Get another Q onto him. And I know because he wants to crash the wave, he's focused on crashing the wave. And I poke him. Once he walks up, I walk back. Once he walks back, I instantly walk up again. That's a simple thing. He walks up, you walk back. You wa he walks back, he walks up. I get another Q. And I see... I get another Q after I did this, because I punished him a lot for trying to crash the wave already. So here, I have an all-in window. And he knows that, and I know it. But I know he w the only way out for him is to stun me and... E out. He wants to get auto hit stun. I won't let him. I know his stun is going to come, so I back off. And he looks like a complete idiot. He knows that if he walks too far, he's gonna die, so he turns around, and uh, I instantly turn around as well at the same time. Don't even wait and already give him my W in, MIQ. And now he uses his stun on the minion. You know what's happening. Q, Q, auto hit, and follow up with my E. See? Use my E as a follow up tool. And he's dead. And that's all because of the level 1. Just the level 1 itself. And that's already a 3 0 Yon, or a 2 0 actually. Nida got one kill. And with a massive lead. And that's how you play these matchups, and that's how you utilize it. <coughs> Now as for the mid game game plan, you want to split push. In theory, you always want to split push. But listen, in theory, because in theory split push always is a good thing. If no one makes a mistake, but people will get caught. So don't split when there's lots of skirmishes. If the enemy team has hard engage, if your team gets caught a lot, or if you're hyper fed, what do I mean by that? If you win a 5v5 but lose a 4v4, why would you need to split? Why would you risk your team getting caught without you and the enemy team killing everyone and potentially get barren? 
if you win the 5v5 you should really consider how good is your team if uh, if they get caught if there's a lot of fighting and if the enemy team has hard engaged you always have to make this decision individual and it takes a lot of game knowledge but will you will get used to it always try to make up your mind about the split push decision and also always try to get picks in while split pushing for example I once lost the kale, kale lane as Yon. Yes, it sounds embarrassing, it is, but the Kale was actually pretty well in the game after she got some ganks in the early game. I lost the lane, but I had my core items and she was splitting bot. And I knew she gonna split further, so all I did is just stand in a bush and wait for her to walk in, because I knew she's gonna walk into that bush. She walked into that bush until she realized what's going on. She was already half HP. I killed her. And what did happen after it? I TP to Baron. We get Baron, win the game off it. So try to get picks. Use your TP properly if you're playing top. With If you're playing at mid, it's kind of hard. So if you're playing mid, Try to always split next to the objective. If you're playing uh, for Baron, split top. If you're playing for Drake, split bot. And if you have TP, reverse it. Pull the enemies as far away from the objective and then TP to the objective. That's pretty much it. I hope you learned a lot. And if you have any questions, let me know. And I'm out. Peace. Have a good one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell button for more content.